Later, the one half becomes positive. That's a square root. Can I cross out the five x and the five x squared? Mm -hmm. Oh heck no! No 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 no! We can't do that. All right, I see that all day long. All right, angry, but no, we can't do that. Are you ready to move on from the general power rule? Because that's about all I can show you with that. I mean, it doesn't change after this. If you can do these couple problems, you're you're okay so far. Are you okay so far? If it's given to you that way, what I'm expecting most of the time is, is that if I give it to you as exponents, exponents are fine. If I give it to you as roots, change it back to roots. Can you do that derivative? That would be what, folks? Oh, very good. You're memorizing it. Fantastic. Can you do that derivative? The answer is no, not with what you know. Well, actually, yes, because we just talked about chain rule. But not what you knew before today. The answer would be no. But let's look at it. Do you have a composition going on in this? Which means can you cover up a piece of it and get some other function, basically? If I cover this part up, if I say cover up the inside, we're always talking about covering up the inside. Cover up the inside and I say, well, let's let y equals cosine of u, and u equals whatever's under my hand, would that be an appropriate composition? Because if I let the u go in for u, in fact, x to the fourth go in for u, then I get that back again, right? Well, if we find our dy du, what's dy du here, ladies and gentlemen? We just talked about it. Negative sign what? U. u. Negative sine u and du dx. What's du dx? And we knew that dy dx is dy du times du dx. True? True story. This is negative sine u because that's dy du. That's this times du dx, which is 4x cubed. dy du, du dx, dy du times du dx. That's a chain rule. We just talked about that. That's this right here. What's the one last thing that I need to do? Substitute. Why, why do I need to substitute? Don't want to end with u's and x's. We'll make it prettier, but that's the one I want to talk about. This will ultimately become negative 4x cubed sine of x to the fourth. That would be the derivative of that curve. Are you okay with how to do that? Do that 4x cubed out front. Notice what you can't do. Oh, please, goodness, don't do this. Please don't, please. Please don't ever multiply those. That's an angle. This is not. This you cannot make 4x to the seventh. If you do that, I, I'm going to burn your paper. I'm burning. <laughs> Gone. What well, homework? I didn't see any homework from you. I'm just going to burn it because it's embarrassment. I want you to do that. Just kidding. I wouldn't burn it. But I will go, no, with like five exclamation points and underline it and scribble on it and stomp on it. That's about it. I'm not going to kick a puppy. <laughs> not, that, not that bad. But Are you okay with this? Here's what this says in English. We'll stop here. This says, in order to do the chain rule with this type of thing, you really don't need to show me this. This is just the underlying work. Here's what it says in English. Well, I have a little bit, a little bit of calculus. It says, if you want to take the derivative of a composition, the derivative of a composition such as we just had right now, Here's what this said to do. It says, I want you to take the derivative, look what it does, please. It says, take the derivative of cosine, right? What's the derivative of cosine? Negative sine. Negative sine, and leave the inside alone. Does that look familiar? That's exactly what we do with general power rule, right there. Take the derivative of the outside function, the, the, the cosine in this case. 
but then you just can't forget to multiply by the derivative of whatever the inside was. And that's what this says. Take the derivative of the inside and multiply it. That's what we did with general power rule. A lot of people do this. They will give me this, they give me this all day long. Oh, it kills me. They say, oh, yeah, answer is negative sine of uh, 4x cubed. I get that all day long. See the common mistake that people would make to get that. They go, oh, yeah, derivative of cosine, negative sine. Derivative of the inside, 4x cubed. Is this right? No because they have not applied the chain rule. Chain rule says you have a composition here. You need to take the derivative of your function, sure, leave the inside alone, then multiply by the derivative inside. So this says you take, I'm going to use a kind of combination of rules here, or uh, sorry, notation. You take f prime of x, I'm sorry, f prime of g of x, times g prime of x. That's what you do. Derivative of the outside, Leave the inside alone, times the derivative of the inside. And that's exactly, do you see that over here? Do you see what that means for us here? Okay, good. Derivative of the function times the derivative of the inside. And that's what we're doing. How many people feel okay with what we've talked about so far? I will start here next time with a couple more chain rules, and then we'll keep on moving. Thing, right? So uh, today, we are practicing. All we are practicing today is applications of the three rules that we talked about. Chain rule, which includes the general power rule, the product rule, and the push rule. That, that's pretty much it. Uh, what you know from the chain rule is this. This says in English, you take the derivative of the function, leaving the inside alone, and you multiply by the derivative of the inside. If you can remember that for the chain rule, you're good to go. We'll start <coughs> simply, then I'm going to start building on some nasty looking problems. Oh my gosh. And they'll take us maybe the whole board to do. Uh, but you need to see them because your homework should be like that too. Okay, I don't want to leave you hanging on, on this stuff. So we're going to do examples. We're going to do examples pretty much all day. Okay, sine of 4x to the fifth. Uh, a couple questions for you. First thing, is this a product rule? Okay, so product rule doesn't apply because this is a, actually a function. This is really a composition. You know, a lot of people really don't understand trigonometry. They go, oh, yeah, it's sine times 4x to, 4x to the fifth, which is not really what we're doing, right? You can't take, if I just give you sine, that's meaningless. That doesn't mean sine, that means a sin, right? Now, if I give you sine with an angle, that means sine, okay? I'm not going to write sin on your paper. You're not going to write sin. If you write sin without this, you're sinning in math, <laughs> that you're sinning, right? You have to have this part. You have to have something with it. If you just have this, that, right? That, that's not, sine by itself is meaningless. It must have something attached to it. So this is not a product rule. What this is is a composition of two functions. A composition of 4x to the fifth into sine. What that means whenever you see a composition is a chain rule will work. If you can cover up a piece of it and you still have a function, that means it's a chain rule. You okay with that? That's chain rule right there. So if we use the chain rule, the chain rule says this. It says in order to find dy dx, you're going to take the derivative of the function, yes, but you're going to at first leave the inside of it alone. So what's the derivative, everybody, of sine? Cosine. So we do the cosine, yes. Do we take the derivative of 4x to the fifth right here? No. That's going to stay long. That, that's, that's this part. Okay, that's the g of x. That says 4x to the fifth. This says you don't even change g of x, and we didn't change g of x. Times, ah, the derivative of g of x. That's where you get the derivative of the inside. You don't mash it all together. You don't take this derivative and the derivative and put it right here. That's not what you do. This should be cosine of 20x to the fourth. That's not it. You take this derivative later, and you multiply it. And I want to see it written out, 4x to the fifth, like that. And then you take the derivative. What's the derivative of 4x to the fifth? That's where we're getting that from. So we're going to have a 20x to the fourth times cosine, I don't even need that times, of 4x to the fifth. That right there, that's our derivative. That was a chain rule. So on the test, you want to see ddx? Yeah, I absolutely want to see that. Okay. Uh, what, the way I'm showing you things in class is the way I want to see them on your test. Because I'm, I'm going to grade each little part. I'm going to look for this. I'm going to look for this. Right, there's only two steps. Don't get lazy and not show me your steps. You okay with that one? Yeah, that's a pretty basic one. We're going to start <coughs> building them up now. I'm going to start incorporating more and more rules so you can start seeing them. You ready for it? Yeah. yeah. Let's do this.
you know a really good note to write down here or at least think about? You want to think about the rules that you're going to have to do before you start your problem. Uh, mostly you think about the most encompassing rule here. So when you look at this problem, what does this actually mean? What does the cosine squared x to the fourth mean? <coughs> cosine, cosine, cosine x to the fourth. Write it like that. Give yourself a chance at this problem. Instead of just leaving it like this, maybe you write it as cosine x to the fourth squared. Because that's what it really actually means there, doesn't it? We just take a shortcut and put a square there oftentimes. You okay with that so far? Now let's think. Start with our rules. Which rule encompasses the whole problem? Is it a chain rule? Is it a general power rule? I see two of them right now. What? But I'm going to use a specific, t I know they're both chain rules, all right, so they're going to be more specific than that. Which one is, should we do first? This part, or should we deal with the two first? The two. And what does that two say to do? That's the general power rule. Now, it is a chain rule, but it's a specific chain rule. It's like a corollary to the chain rule. It's called the general power rule. So what this says is, I have, if you can cover it up, remember that, it's a chain rule. It's a specific chain rule because it has a power. It's this general power rule. General power. Rule. <coughs> and then inside of that, you're probably going to have a chain rule. Do you see the chain rule as well? If we start with the, the largest rule, I'll say largest because it's the one that comes with everything. If you start with that, then you can follow your DDX. But it's all about how you start. You've got to think about that first. Are you with me? So let's go ahead and do our, our DDX. Uh, what happens to this thing? What are we going to do? Move there. So this two Drop down. goes out front. All right. And I'm going to have, what, what's next? Come on, tell, tell me. Does this change for my general power rule? So I'm still going to have a cosine x to the fourth uh, to what power? One. So do I need a bracket with a little one? Is this okay on how to get there? And then I'm done? No what? Of just x to the fourth? What's the derivative that should come next? Remember when you do a general power rule, you cover the whole thing up, right? You go, okay, take the derivative of what's under my hand. It says you move the 2 down, you subtract 1 from it. That's great. And you don't change what's under my hand. That's this part. But then you have to take the derivative of everything that's under my hand. Do you get me? So it's not just x to the fourth. It's what? Cosine. The whole thing. No, 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 not brutal. Fun. Tonight. <laughs> yes, tonight. <laughs> Richard, if you're okay with that so far, you see where you see why you have a cosine there. Do you see why you have a cosine there? This one you do not change. This one you take the derivative of the entire inside function. That's how the general power rule, aka the chain rule, works. Derivative of the function times the derivative of the inside. But now you're done with the calculus up to this point. Now you follow your DDX, and this has broken down your problem, made it a little bit easier. Can you take the derivative of cosine x to the fourth? Yes. What rule is that? That's the chain rule. The chain rule says you take the derivative of your function times the derivative of your inside. That's what it says to do. The derivative.